Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah, wa salam alaikum, peace. Somebody was asking me one time, what about this word you say all the time, salam, what is that? Is that like shalom? As a matter of fact, it's very much like the word shalom. Shalom, this is the Hebrew word for peace. And one time I was in New York, New York City, Manhattan, at night, and a friend of mine was driving. I saw somebody I had not seen in a long time, and I called out to him. And I said, yeah, brother, brother, salam alaikum. The driver stopped and I got over out of the car. I was hugging my friend and saying salam alaikum to him. And a man was standing there wearing a black suit, black coat, a black hat, and he had black hair and his hair was curly right here. He had these special curls right on the side. And he had real thick glasses and he looked at me and he said something to me. He said, uh, oh, he said Yiddish, you know Hebrew. I said, no, I don't know Hebrew. No, he said, you said Shalom Aleikum. I said, no, I said Salam Aleikum. And he said, oh, and he put his hand out. He was shaking my hand. And I said, no, this is Arabic. Salam Aleikum. He said, I thought it's Hebrew. Shalom Aleikum. I thought you're Jewish. I said, no. He said, oh, it shocked him. He didn't know that we say salam alaikum. I said, it's the same, it's how people pronounce it. The letter seen and the letter sheen, because there is SH in Arabic has one letter, sheen. They're exactly the same. There's no difference between these two letters. In the original, there's no difference. They look exactly alike. You just have to know what it is in the word. Is it sh or s? You didn't know. And the way it gets settled now is that the Muslims put three dots over one of them and say, when you see three dots, this will be the sh sound, sheen. So when they did the Maserati text for the Bible, in the ninth century, they decided to copy the idea that the Muslims had for the Quran. So they put markings on the Hebrew. Now they also had a letter called Sin and a letter called Sheen. And by the way, they look similar in that they have three things that come up. A little bit different because they're more block style. But what they did, they put a dot on the left side. And if it's a dot on the left side, this would be like seen, and if it's a dot on the right side, it would be sheen. So if you reverse the dots, you'll be saying it the opposite way. But before there was any dots, a person had to guess what it was or how to pronounce it. So they say, Shalom Alaikum, and Muslims say, Salam Alaikum. Now, it's interesting when we talk about this word peace, peace. Did you know that one of the oldest cities on earth is related to the word peace? One of the oldest cities on the earth is related to this word peace. I was in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, the University of Colorado. We had a special lecture from one of the Jewish professors and he was telling us about this topic. And he was saying that the oldest place, Jerusalem, he was saying, is a city built on layers of civilizations. There was one civilization, then it went, and then another, and another, and another. And if you dig down, you keep digging down, you find another civilization you didn't even know about. A city under a city under a city. Even now they find amazing things in Jerusalem when they're digging and doing archaeological uh, surveys and so on. Well. He was telling us the root of the word, though. He said it's from the word jar, which means a place. This word jar means a place. And shalom, jar shalom. And I said, wait a minute. I recognize this. And in Arabic, it would be dar. Place in Arabic is dar, darus salam. 
Darul Salam. We say that all the time, Darul Salam. We have many places that are called place of peace. Darul Salam. Now the <clears throat> professor saw me there and he, he knew who I was and he asked, uh, is this the same for Arabic? And I said, actually, you're exactly right. Instead of Jar, it's Dar. Darul Salam, Jar Shalom. If you reverse the scene in the Sheen. Then he said, do you know that I always wondered about this subject. I said, well, I guess it could be the placement of these dots that some of the tribes perhaps pronounce the scene like the sheen and the sheen like the scene. After this, I began to notice a lot of things about reading Hebrew. In my studies of the Bible, of course, in the Hebrew, the words are pronounced a little bit different, but I started recognizing them in Arabic. Elysia is Elysia. That's one of the prophets. Shalom is Selam. So the more I looked at it, the more I realized that all I have to do is take, <coughs> uh, like for instance, uh, uh, there's one, is, uh, one of the prophets, his name, uh, Shamal. Huh? Samuel. Shamal. Samuel. Switching it out. As we were talking about this, then the professor said, you know, isn't it strange? The place is called place of peace. The city is called place of peace. Many prophets are coming from there. Many prophets are going there to this place of peace. He said, but we look at it today and we have to be honest. It is anything except a place of peace. And then he said, we wish for peace to be there. We wish for the real peace for Almighty God to be on that on that ancient city. And I said, I mean, we all wish for this. And I think it's a good lesson for us to experience this etymology of words, to look at words and go back in our history and find how people understood them and then see how we have some commonalities. We all have this desire for what? For peace. And we hope and pray for real peace from Almighty Allah for all the people everywhere. I mean.